A Coco Panda's Tale Part 1 To Marrow the Loner My name is Yuiwi, and I'm a Coco Panda. People call us monsters, but we're not all bad. Some of us are actually very nice. Just like my friend, Tamaro. He and I have known each other since we were cubs. Our whole lives, he was the kind of guy who did everything on his own, so everyone in our pack thought of him as a strong, independent loner. But I thought it must get hard having to do everything alone. That's why I decided to follow him one day and make sure he was okay. I hid behind a bush and watched him climb to the top of a big tree to get his dinner. After a while, he came back down, a nice big fruit in his paws. I breathed a sigh of relief. It seemed like he would have more than enough to eat tonight. But just then, I took a better look at the fruit he had found and let out a small gasp. It was rotten. Inside it was icky, mushy, and full of bugs. To make things worse, it was getting dark, and he wouldn't have any time to look for more. All us Coco Pandas know that it's much too dangerous to wander around outside at night. Tamaro noticed how rotten his fruit was, too. He looked up at the setting sun, and with a short sigh, he picked up his fruit and started to head back to our camp for the night. I followed him back to our den, making sure not to be seen. But then I heard his tummy grumbling. He must have been really hungry. I watched as he glanced at his fruit with a sour expression, then held his nose and prepared to take a bite. Tamaro, stop! I shouted, dashing out from my hiding place. You can't eat that fruit, it's rotten! I grabbed it out of his paw just in time. Though he was surprised at first, the expression on his face quickly turned to a frown. Hm, what's your problem, you wee wee? You can't tell me what to eat. I was taken aback by how rude he was being. I was only trying to help. I got so flustered, I ended up speaking my mind to him right there and then. Look, if you can't find any food yourself, that's okay. All you need to do is ask someone to share with you. No way, he scoffed. Asking for help is like admitting you're too weak to do it on your own. Don't be silly, I scolded him. It only makes sense for us to all help each other out. You're the only one who thinks that, you wee wee. He grumbled, crossing his arms. I couldn't understand why he was being so stubborn. Did he not trust the rest of us? Or was he just too proud to admit he was wrong? Well, let's find out, shall we? I called one of the other Coco Pandas from our pack over to us. Hello there, you two. Something wrong? He said in a leisurely drawl as he walked over to Tamaro and I. We had trouble finding any good fruit today. Could we have some of yours? I asked. Oh, is that all? No problem. Here you go. He said, handing us each a fresh piece of fruit. I thanked him and waved goodbye as he left. See? I turned to Tamaro. It's really just that easy. There's nothing to be ashamed of. In return, we just need to help the others out when they need it. Tamaro made a face like he wanted to object, but ended up taking the fruit all the same. Feeling like I'd finally gotten through to him, at least a little bit, I went back to my bed, hoping that he'd learn to rely more on others. By the time I'd woken up the next day, it was already past lunchtime. I was still a little worried about Tamaro, so I decided to keep an eye on him again. I went and snuck behind a bush and peeped through the leaves, but what I saw made my heart jump right into my throat. Something was very wrong. Tamaro was covered in cuts and bruises, and he was growling more fiercely than I'd ever heard him before. T Tamaro? What's wrong? Are you okay? I asked timidly, coming out of my hiding place. He didn't seem to hear me. He didn't even react to me at all. He just kept staring at the path leading out of the forest and growling. I looked in the direction he was facing and saw a human walking down the path. As soon as I did, I knew something bad was about to happen. I reached my paw out, trying to place it on Tamaro's shoulder. Before I could get close enough, however, he leapt at the human, tore away the bag they were carrying, and ran off deep into the woods. I was horrified. This wasn't like Tamaro at all. I knew him better than anyone, and he'd absolutely never attack someone like that. There was only one explanation. He'd given in to his instincts and become a mindless beast. Part 2. Yui Wee's Stand I sprang up suddenly, panicked and confused. 
After a moment or two, I realized I was in my bed. I slowly calmed myself and laid back down. It was all just a bad dream, right? It seemed so real, though. I looked around. My tummy was telling me it was still early, closer to breakfast time than lunch. I didn't think what had happened in my dream was real, but I was still worried about Tamaro, so I went to check up on him, just in case. However, I arrived at his bed to find it empty. Feeling a sinking sensation in the pit of my stomach, I called out to him. Tamaro? Where are you? As if in reply, a fearsome howl echoed off in the distance. Tamaro's bed was the farthest one out in our camp. Out of everyone, he was the most at risk of being attacked by outsiders. I immediately took off, running as fast as my legs could carry me in the direction the howl had come from. Before long, I'd reached the forest on the edge of our camp. I spotted Tamaro in the middle of a clearing. He was crouched low to the ground, holding a weapon he'd made out of an old gourd. I could tell from where I was that he was injured. His attention was focused entirely on his opponent, a bracken monkey. It must have been what made that howl I'd heard. Something's wrong with that monkey. Oh, he must have gone feral, I gasped under my breath. Even monsters who can normally control their instincts can be driven wild and lose their minds when they're especially hungry or hurt. Just like what happened in my dream. Sometimes a strong blow to the head will bring them back to their senses, but often they'll never return to their old selves. They leave their packs and vanish into the wilds. I glanced at Tamaro. He was already hurt pretty badly. I wondered if the Tamaro from my dream was injured by this same bracken monkey. If the real Tamaro was hurt any more, he might turn feral too. Before I realized it, I had stepped between him and the monkey. Don't worry, Tamaro! I'll protect you, I said. Yui-wee, he gasped. I was so relieved to hear him call my name. Tears started running down my face. He hadn't gone feral. That part of my dream hadn't come true, at least. Hey, Tamaro exclaimed. This is no time to be crying. This guy's gone wild. We need to knock him out faster. His voice trailed off. A look of alarm spread across his face as he glanced behind me. I turned around just in time to see the bracken monkey launch a flying kick right at my head. Yui-wee, look out! Tamaro gasped. Right at the last second, I parried the monkey's kick and counterattacked, sending it flying straight into a thick tree trunk. The wind knocked out of it. The monkey looked shocked and confused for a moment before passing out. Wow, that really was a close one. I sure am glad I learned that move from the creepy sheep, I said as I dusted myself off. Tamaro let out a deep sigh and slumped down on the ground. I should have known you'd be okay, he said. You're the strongest one in our whole pack, after all. <laughs> well, a girl's got to know a good self-defense move or two, I giggled. I realized then that I had Tamaro's complete attention. I knew it could be my chance to finally get through to him. Why didn't you call for help as soon as that bracken monkey attacked you? I asked, frowning. <laughs> Why should I call for help when it's something I could have handled myself? He shrugged. But you weren't handling it. And even if you had won the fight, you're so injured, you might have ended up going feral too. I told him. I yeah, well, so what if I had? He scoffed. That's got nothing to do with you. I couldn't believe he'd had the nerve to say that to me. Didn't he realize how much I cared about him? I couldn't take it anymore. While I'm normally a very patient panda, he'd gone too far. I grabbed Tamaro by the shoulders and looked him right in the eyes. Listen, Tamaro, I know how hard you work. I agree with you that getting help from others all the time without trying for yourself is just being lazy. But you're not that kind of panda. Don't let your fear stop you from getting help when you need it. You can rely on everyone in the pack. You can rely on me. You might like the idea that you're some strong, independent loner, but in reality, when you push everyone away, you're just being self-absorbed. I stopped to catch my breath and waited for Tamaro to say something in response. He lowered his face. I couldn't tell what he was thinking. After a moment, he opened his mouth and began to speak. Yui-wi, I... I didn't hear anything past that. There was a whip sound 
and suddenly a sharp pain shot through the back of my head. I started to feel dizzy, but I sensed something moving around behind me. I figured the monkey must have woken up and thrown a stone at me. I was quickly losing consciousness, but I knew if I passed out, Tamaro would keep trying to fight on his own. He might end up turning feral. Please, Tamaro, I gasped. I don't want to lose you. I'd be so sad if I couldn't see you anymore. There was so much I wanted to tell him, but I just couldn't find the words. My head was swimming. It became harder and harder to think straight. As a panda who's very conscious about being ladylike, it's a little hard for me to admit this, but I knew all my self-defense training had made me too tough for this to kill me. So why? Why was I? And then it happened. My thoughts slipped away and were replaced by pure instinct. I had become a mindless, feral cocoa panda. Part 3. Tamaro's Decision My name is Tamaro, and I'm a cocoa panda. I prefer to do things on my own, so I don't spend a lot of time with the others in my pack. When I'm in a crowd, all I can see is everyone hiding their true intentions, subtly fighting over territory, obsessing over social standing, giving fruit, just to make sure someone else owes them a favor. It all makes me sick. That's why I moved my bed out to the edge of the camp. I thought I could avoid all that stuff, live on my own, and solve my own problems. But Yui Wee, a panda I'd known since we were cubs, was always pestering me. We're both usually in the same part of camp, so why don't we hang out for a while? She'd ask. We're only in the same part of camp because you moved your bed closer to where mine is, I'd think to myself. Tomorrow, stop! You can't eat that fruit, it's rotten, she said, grabbing my food out of my hand. Honestly, I'd rather eat rotten fruit than have to go beg someone else for theirs. Why didn't you call for help as soon as that bracken monkey attacked you? She grabbed me, tears still in her eyes. I didn't have an answer. Maybe, deep down, part of me knew if I was in trouble, she'd come to my rescue. You might like the idea that you're some strong, independent loner, but in reality, when you push everyone away, you're just being self-absorbed. She was right. Anytime things got truly difficult for me, I'd end up relying on her help in the end. I was only being so stubborn because I wanted everyone to think I could handle things on my own. This whole time, I'd just been acting tough. But I couldn't keep it up anymore. Yui, I... I don't work hard at all. I'm just a pathetic excuse for a panda who's done nothing but take advantage of your kindness. I was only fooling myself, thinking I was fine on my own. I'm such an idiot. But it was too late now. She probably couldn't even understand what I was saying anymore. She'd become a wild beast. I watched as she approached the bracken monkey, snarling. It only took a few quick strikes from her before the monkey was collapsed in a heap on the ground. I could tell that he wouldn't be waking up anytime soon, but I knew I couldn't relax just yet. Her opponent defeated, Yuiwi began to gnaw on the fern-like crest on his head. I can only imagine that she saw it as just another plant in her feral state. Yuiwi, stop! I pleaded. Don't eat that. This isn't like you. I grabbed her and tried to pull her away, but it was no use. She was the strongest Coco Panda I knew. Even if I hadn't been exhausted from the battle, I wouldn't have been able to budge her. I wasn't about to give up, though. I couldn't let my best friend lose herself like this. I looked around for a way to help her and saw my weapon lying on the ground nearby. I thought that if I hit her with it just right... It might bring her back to her senses. But no, it was too risky. If I messed up, it'd just make her angry. And if I had to fight her, I would end up going feral too. Yuiwi wouldn't want that. You said you didn't want to lose me. I looked at her and dusted myself off. Well, I don't want to lose you either. And I don't care what I have to do. 
It's time I stopped acting tough. I took a deep breath and shouted for help as loud as I possibly could. I shouted until I was completely out of breath. It was the first time in my life I'd ever asked for help, but I didn't care anymore. Getting Yui back to normal was the only thing that mattered to me. In mere moments, our entire pack had come to my side. When we heard you finally asking for help, we was all so happy. The whole pack came a-running, one of them said to me. I recognized him. He was the same panda who had shared his food with us the other night. I never knew he could move that quickly. He'd always seemed kind of dopey to me. But now, his eyes were sharp and focused. It's Yui-Wi! She got hurt protecting me, and now she's gone feral. P please I need your help to calm her down! I stumbled over my words, trying to get them out as quick as I could. Everyone banded together to drag Yui Wee away from the monkey and hold her still. Then, with a swift blow to the head, they knocked her out. She slumped to the ground and lay there, as if she'd simply fallen asleep. That ought to do the trick. Now, we better go and grab some of her favorite berries. The smell will help wake her up, the helpful Coco Panda said. The others all went to gather some berries and placed them in a neat little pile right in front of Yuiwi's face. After a few moments, her nose began to twitch, smelling the sweet fragrance, and her eyes fluttered open. Huh? I'm... okay? She said, still a bit groggy. I couldn't believe my eyes. She was back to her old self. I was immediately overcome with relief, so much so that I might have even cried a little. It was then that I finally understood how she must have felt when she came to save me. Tomorrow, are you okay? My head hurts a little, but other than that, I'm fine. And, huh? What are you all doing here? She looked at the rest of our pack with a bewildered expression. It's no wonder she was confused. I bet she never expected me to swallow my pride, and ask the whole pack for help. Everyone looked on with warm smiles as I took Yui Wee's paw in mine. I decided there and then that I wouldn't try to act tough anymore. I was going to tell her exactly how I felt. It's just like you said. It only makes sense for us to all help each other out. I turned to the rest of our pack. Thank you, everyone, for helping us. And thank you, Yui Wee, I said turning back to her, for always being there for me. From that day on, I decided to give the other Coco Pandas a chance. It turned out that working together isn't so bad every now and then. We're all friends now, and the days I spend with Yui Wee and the others are filled with smiles. <laughs>